on my neck. Did you really? Uh-huh. Did it feel good? Yeah. Did it help? Yeah. Can you breathe better? Yeah. Yay! I'm going to use it for the night, because if I cough in the night. Awesome. You know that stuff that we see on TV to help your um, throat if it's going to cough in the night? Really? Remember it? Yes, I do. Thank you. There are some questions. Here we go. Those are from the last stream. I don't think there's anybody in here watching us yet. <laughs> Whoopsies. Yay. Hi, this is Coach MK. If you're new to the stream, start nightly your phone rolling stream for another Mother Runners Train Like a Mother Club. That's www.trainlikeamother.club. Guess who feels better? She slept all day, which means we're probably going to party all night. Yay! So let's do, with what limited little energy I have left, before it totally leaves my body. Whoops. 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 Yeah, you better hold that up. You can't put it down. She's going to want it. She's also going to want to get that. Actually, my um, could you do it today? Because I want to play the baby and entertain What? Could you do this today? Yes. This today? Yes, I could. Yes. I could and I will. Come on, you can go crawl. You want to go for a Oh, no. No, no thank no, you. No, no, no. Okay, come on. My cheese. Baby. Hello. So something happened just a minute ago, Suze, and uh, my screen that I'm watching right now is upside down. Awesome. So if anything is too egregious, hard to see or out of place, you're going to have to let me know because everything, like I said, is quite literally upside down. Yay. So I think the first thing we were supposed to talk about was what to do um, when it comes to what would return to running, generally speaking, look like? Hi. Hi. Can I write some stuff? After I finish writing my stuff and talking, can you can I ask me? Could I write it over here though? When I, I have to finish first and then you can while I foam roll, okay? You wanna do your word games while I foam roll? Yes, definitely. Awesome. Can I start making my word games? You asked to see the baby, and this baby is following you. Uh-huh. Yay! Hello, Pat Brockman. I am so glad you're in here. It is good to see you. Okay, so what we're going to talk about before I get to the phone rolling tonight is the stinky baby with the respiratory virus. Cheyenne, I thought you were... Oopsies. Definitely watching her. Oh, you're, what? you're looking at her over here, which is a difference. There's a difference. There's looking at the baby and then there's watching the baby. Okay. Put her over here and I'll watch her. Okay. And then, um... Wait, can I use the eraser for something? Yes. Hi, we're just gonna keep the baby over there with you. Yay! All right, so here are the considerations when we're coming back. This is gonna be a disaster, I can already tell. Hi, babies. Hi, Shiloh. How are you? What? Wake up. You're so silly. What is that? It's not that O. Is that an O? Mom, where did Daddy go? Daddy went to work, and he had to get on an airplane to go to work. Not tonight, because I have to work really late tonight, but tomorrow, after pizza, if everyone's really good, yes, we can. Okay, I'm really good. I know you're really good, but you got to keep being really good, and that is challenging. I, I have, I, this is Marcy, Shiloh, Definitely. It's upside down. down. I'm upside down. Yes, uh, Susan, that's what I'm talking about. It looks upside down when you look at the camera. Why? I don't know. Look at the camera. It's amazing. So, if you guys remember, really, this is like I said, it's gonna be a disaster. Can we? Can we? Why does she have to be upset? <laughs> I don't know. It happened when we hit it the last time. So I need you guys not to touch this anymore. All right. So the last time when I when I put this up on the screen, what I was trying to do 
was show what a good return to running, uh, what a good migration from um, heart rate 101 to the monthlies would look like, what sort of adjustments you would make. You need to let, we, y'all gotta let me finish, it's my turn now, because I wanna finish before midnight. So, we're gonna make some little changes. The question that I saw earlier today, and then to come back to, because there was a baby sleeping downstairs that won't sleep tonight, yay you, and yay me. Um, the other question to come back to is, what does it look like when we're returning from injury? So I thought it'd be worth taking a minute to go over it. Broadly and generally speaking, what you saw before was a good way to ramp things up without going crazy. And there are always little trade-offs that we have to make when we're adding in, when we're making runs longer, because we can't add intensity, strength, power, and endurance all at the same time. It's really too much for your body. That is how people get hurt. It's like saying, I want to lose weight and lift weight at the same time. Like, that is a great way to destroy your joints. Shut up, don't touch it. You're, up, you're upside down. Thank you. Yes, I'm upside down. It's amazing how I managed to live upside down. Thank you for wiping. Let's stand back and not wipe anymore until I finish, okay? Can we, can we take one step back, one step back? That's not back. That's not back. That's not back. That's not back. Thank you. I'm Thank back you. Can you hang out right there? Here. Thank you. So remember. I'm on the job. Okay, then you don't have to wait your turn. If I say it one more time, there's no slumber party tomorrow. Quiet. I'm just. I'm so when it comes uh, to returning to running, we want to keep the same formula as much as possible. Because that's always like priority one. If I had to say the order of operations of returning. From injury, R. It's number one. We've got to keep the real estate as much as possible. Mine. And by that, I mean the second you give up that spot on the calendar because you feel guilty, because you're in rehab, because you're not really running at the moment, whatever kind of nonsense, talking down answer that you're going to give yourself. Um, that can and might be used against you later, it's going to be that much harder to get that real estate back. So we never, ever, 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 ever give it up. Plus, whatever goes into that time slot, um, you're going to fill it with something that's that, again, it's, you're going to lose the running habit. And whatever fills that space, it's going to be hard to stop doing that thing to get back into a running habit. So we need to keep the running habit. Even if you can't run, remember what I said in my previous stream, the two questions you have to ask yourself, what can I do in general? And then what is the work specifically to mitigate or to manage this injury? Those are the two things you have to work through. So while you're working through it, you want to keep the real estate in your calendar. So we want to keep this training pattern as much as possible. Again, once, it go, once it's gone, it's gone. Once you say like, oh, you know, I'm not training at the moment, sure, I'll take that Friday that Friday morning pickup or drive, take the kids to school so you can train for your Ironman, guess what? Ironman's all encompassing. <laughs> They're not going to stop training for an Ironman because you feel better. So be really, 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 really selfish of the time blocks in your calendar. Do not give them away for any reason. So here's how I would kind of work out coming back in. I'm drawing the tape on you. And that is, that is an, not, not saying this is the ideal, but if you've taken more than several weeks off, if we've taken more than three weeks off, if the injury you had was severe, then this is a pretty good baseline first week back in. Now, the other thing you might remember from the, from the, the stream I did the other night, I said that there are uh, three types of easy runs. That should be your default. And one is an easy effort with pickups. And all baseline runs, I mean, like, if you don't know what to do, what you should keep coming back to, guys, last, last warning. The, the one thing you're going to keep coming back to is an easy effort run between 30 and 60 minutes of duration, right? And there are options depending on where you are. I've been in bed for a year, for example, so a stride sandwich is out of the question for me. I don't yet have the aerobic fitness to, to do it. I'll get there, but I'm not there yet. So option one is easy effort with pickups. E, uh, option number two is the stride sandwich. And option number three 
is big girl pickups. And if you remember from any of the other plans, big girl pickups are 60 second pickups. Chill. Thank you. We're gonna do it eventually. Every mile or every half mile after a warm up. And I'll come back to like what is a warm up in a minute because I know that is that is that is spinning some people out right now, and I feel you because my worldview is very different. But that said, this is what I call. If we're going back to basics, that is your basic and that is your baseline. If you don't know what to do, you can't go wrong with 30 to 60 minutes of one of the three. At the stride sandwich, this one is the more esoteric one. This is one you have to have the, the highest level aerobic fitness to do. So this is also a reward. You want The idea is to keep re uh, rehabbing and training to be fit enough to do a stride sandwich again. It's not trying to push it sooner. Sooner is not better. Do, if you like strides are great, do them at the end of any run. But throwing them in the middle of the run is only going to frustrate you and make you need to walk the back half of the run, which is going to be the opposite of what we need to do. Don't try to get here too quickly. If you're really eager to do a stride sandwich, if the easy effort with pickups just isn't doing it for you, go to Big Girl Pickups. If that doesn't do it and you can't handle life, pickups on steroids. And that is a 20 second pickup to 10K pace every quarter mile. So if you're doing 30 minutes, you're gonna divide it into three parts, right? A 30 minute stand aside, a 30 minute run, and this is where I know math, everybody goes, oh my God, roll it, and, they sh and you stop listening, because math is so scary, and I get you, math is scary. It is awful, but we're girls, and we're supposed to like math, and hate putting on makeup, because that is what smart girls do, and that, 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 that trope makes me as angry as trying to push, like don't try to push someone towards math, like they're just gonna, you're gonna make them hate math, right? Foster like a love of logic. Don't like make it the, uh, the the right choice to prefer math. But anyway, math does tend to scare people. So, with if you've got a thirty minute run, we're gonna we're gonna split it into three parts. So we're gonna divide thirty by three, and that's ten minutes. All right. So we're gonna have three ten minute segments. All right. Velocity yet? Velocity yet? This is basic. We're gonna we're gonna go slow. All right. So three a thirty minute run. In three parts, three equal parts, you got a warm up, you got a cool down at the end, and in the middle, you got the work. So a pickup on steroids is going to be exactly that. Ten minutes of just sort of easing into the run, not going crazy, not crossing 140, just being there. Ten minutes at the end of coming out of the run. Walking if you want to, whatever you need to do to keep moving and bring your heart rate down at the same time because that is important. That's the aerobic function. But the work in the middle, and this is the part, again, people like, I want more work, more hard work. I'm like, please, God, no. Do the hard work I want you to do. Go lift a weight. You would rather do 30 minutes of tempo running than touch a weight ever. And I get it, but that is not a wise choice. Please, yay for good decisions. So pick up on steroids. Is a, is a pickup, 20 second pickup, every quarter mile, and you get that for 10 minutes. And I'm, if you're thinking to yourself, but Coach MK, I run 18 minute miles, congratulations. You're, you, in 10 minutes, you're still gonna get like more pickups with pickups on steroids than you would easy effort with pickups, which is why I put this option in the list. Yay for you. Don't worry about it too much. Don't overthink it, don't get stressed out. It all comes with time, but we have to keep moving and we need to not Get injured again, don't touch. Don't touch. Thank you. So this is a good, again, if you don't know what to do, I'm not saying this is the ideal. I'm not saying this is what you must do. But this is a great starting point because you need to have um, a certain level of not just fitness but also certainty uh, that you are free from injury to do one thing continuously for 60 minutes. So 60 is, is better if you can do it, but if you're not sure, I'd rather you do 30 minutes today Still be not sure, but wake up tomorrow, the next day, thinking, I'm sure I could do 20, right? It's the day-to-day it's the -day -day certainty, because what we don't want to have happen is be like, more, and jump right in, because more is better, and more is better, because it is not less. That is terrible logic. I've heard people literally say that to me on the phone before. More is better, because it isn't less. God help you. So if you were to do 60 minutes the first day, and then you can't move the second day because you feel that niggle back in your Achilles, but now you're going to be really responsible. Oh, except the, the thing is still there on Wednesday morning. So I'm going to run again on Thursday. Yay, yeah, because I feel better. And I'm scared now because I'm two days behind. Option one is preferable and more running to option two. So to be really effing clear, 
Option one is the yay choice. Option two is the boo choice. Okay, I don't know if I can make it clearer than that. Option one, Cheyenne, can you add three plus two? Stand back, we're doing math. Three plus two? Three plus two equals five. Awesome, five plus three? Eight. Yay, eight plus three? One more than that. Mm, Eleven. Yes! Eleven plus four. Fourteen. One off. You're so close. Fourteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yay! So option A is 155 minutes of running. Oh! Option B is 120 minutes of running. And it's not just 120 minutes of running, it's 120 minutes of kind of risky running. It's 120 minutes of running that probably has set your recovery back for something that's going to keep coming. So in those moments when you're like, 30 min 20 minutes hardly seems worth it, again, it's more than zero. And more than zero adds up to be more than two one-hour sessions. This level of consistency is going to take you a whole lot further, a whole lot faster than option two. And I know option two is really tempting because we want, when I give you a range, you know, three to six miles, everyone chooses seven. Overachievers, it's the nature of the person that gravitates toward this sport, and I get that, but I'm here to beg you and try to show you with some logic and some numbers why the yay choice, option one, to be really clear, is better than the <laughs> boo choice, which is option two. But this is what most Reynolds Ford do, because 60 is more than nothing, and 60 is more than 30, but at the end of the week, 120 is less than 155. So it's that cumulative effect that we need to think about way more than we need to think about each run in a vacuum. We need to think about how my run... No, nope, when I'm finished, you can't step back. We need to think about how the run today impacts our run tomorrow. And if you go for 30 minutes and can still get up and Mother run 20 the next day, that's way better than doing 60 a day and not being able to move for two days. And I can't make it more clear than that. If you really want some sciencey science to back it up, pick up literally any book ever written about endurance sports where they say you got to be moving at least five days a week. That's all of them, you guys. I don't make up science. I'm not that smart. I'm really not. So I tell you that to tell you this. This is your default good choice. It's 30 minute either. Easy effort with pickups, stride sandwich, big girl pickups, or pickups on steroids. You can keep coming back to that, increasing it from 30 to 60 minutes over time. Cheyenne, may I please have the eraser? Yes. Thank you. Look, mother running train. Susan, can I ask you to get a screen grab of that real can quick I before I erase it? I'm going to keep thinking, and it's going to be glorious. You two just chill and wait. Yeah, my turn, though. So I'm going to assume that you got it because I better keep moving, otherwise my kids are going to force the issue, and I don't like to be forced. So now that we see how these things can add up really quickly, then what do we do? What is the first thing we increase? My answer, believe it or not, is, can I write the answer? Yes. What is it? What do I write it? Right under the 45, I need you to write 6, 0. Okay. 60! Oh my god! And the reason is, we are endurance athletes. Most people that train with me are either training for their health and are trying to meet the standards set by the American Heart Association to lower their blood pressure as per their doctor, or if they're not in it for health, they're in it for alleged performance, meaning you think you're going to run a half or a full marathon at some other point in your human existence, meaning your existence. So that long run is important, and the long run needs to be no shorter than 30% longer than your weakest, longest weekday run. In this scenario, our longest weekday run is 30 minutes, because 30, 20, 30, right? 30 is the longest. We're only looking at weekday runs. We're looking at Monday through Thursday to be extra super duper clear. Okay, so the biggest number in here in this series, Cheyenne, what is the biggest number of these five numbers? 60. That is not an option. Let's try it one more time. 30, 20, 30, 0, 30. What's the biggest number? 
That's okay. So 20, the people watching, 30. the biggest number is 30. Don't worry. Most adults watching this have the same reaction you did. The biggest number is 60, and they're I really confused. I thought that was 60. But we're only looking. I know my handwriting's terrible. We're only looking at the Monday through Friday runs, and the biggest number in there is 30. So, 30% longer. That is 30, a third. 30, 30, 30, 30. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Don't get too far ahead of me, all right? All right, so. 30% is roughly a third. It's not perfectly a third, but it keeps the numbers really simple. And that's what we're going for is simple. Can't keep it simple stupid is usually going to, Occam's razor is usually going to get you to the best answer the fastest. I'm right? More that thinking that can, you can lead to more rumination. So, once again, sh now I'm not done. You're going to take 30 and divide it by 3. And what is that? 10. So, the reverse logic. A third of 30 equals 10. So, that means the long run needs to be no less than 30 plus 10 is 40. But yay, we're already starting off longer than we need to be. We've got a little five minute cushion. So the first thing we wanna to try to increase is not this daily run, it's the long run that comes before the rest day. So. That is why we may, but you don't have to, if you go through 45 minutes in that, in that second week, not the first, go through the first week is written. In that second week, if you're feeling frisky and you feel kind of good, you may extend that long run to 60 minutes, but no longer, and you take that rest day afterwards seriously. I mean it, do not get on a bike and take a ride with your family, much less strap a kid to your back and two more to the bike and pull them in a, in a wagon chariot. Don't do it. I've watched people do that and it is just dumb. Don't do it. Take the rest day seriously. Jesus would like it. The next thing we do, if this in week two, because all of this is going to be the same in week two, except again, if you feel good, the long run is going to be longer. All of this is going to be the same in two. No, that's the, that we're that we're getting into week three. Don't. I love you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Don't get too far ahead of me. Okay. So this is week two, which is the way of saying it's the same as week one. If this goes poorly. We're going to repeat one more time and try, and try for that 60 minutes. Because if 60 minutes does not work for your long run, with the rest day afterwards, we don't need to try to make 40 minutes over here work, all right? So, you can when it's your turn, and it's not your turn yet. Sit, 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 sit. Take your deer and sit. Thank you. Ooh, that's nice. Thank you, sweet girl. I appreciate it. All right, so let's assume now 60 doesn't go well. We repeat the whole week. 60 does go well in week three. Congratulations, we can make a little change over here. And the change we're gonna make, we're gonna take it day by day. We're gonna do 40. If 40 works, 40. we're gonna go 20. If 20 feels good and you don't hate your life on Wednesday when you wake up and you don't have pain, 40. Thursday's your rest day. Friday, we're going to stay at 30. And if you wake up, feel good. If you wake up, feel good, we can do 70. You may do more than 70, but I'd rather you didn't. And there are reasons for that. And it has to do with the choices you're probably making in between. Since we're talking about this theoretically and chances are pretty good, I will uh, not this that you're going to need this scenario in a month when you don't have to use your coach. So that, so that, there you go. Okay, can you can you erase that for me? I wrote that one. Can I know. I can we make this one? No, 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 no. Not until I'm finished. We're going to turn that into a nine. A nine. Okay. A nine. Turn it into a nine. Turn it into a nine. So I can leave the zero because it's going to be 90. But I have to make a nine. Um, yes. So now we're in week four of your rehab. Everything in the weekday is going to be the same, and we increase the long run to 90 minutes. Now, we're going to have one more increase in the long run. Following week, can you write 95? Mm -hmm. And that's assuming this goes well. And then we're going to hold on to 95 for a while while we bring everything else up to, up to par. Okay. Assuming this week, this repeat meeting, and this black line means we're repeating the previous week, right? So... 40, 20, 40, null, 30, 90, and then week five, 
We do an increase again. But I'm almost finished. Let's, let's get through this. All right, 40. Here's your increase. 30. It's, yep, 30. 40. Here's increase number two. 40, 95. Okay? There you go. We're going to repeat this one more time to make sure it's all set. Then the following week, we do the same thing we did. We're hanging out 95 one more time. Can, but I need to finish first, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So now we can go back to increasing. And this is where I would say you're back to <laughs> this week right here. It's not ideal. It's still less than you would be doing in week one of my monthly plans. So that is an indicator. Anything that you do that is less than week one of my weekly plans is not enough to maintain the fitness you acquired during a race cycle. And the goal is not to get back to PR fitness because you're going to hurt yourself over shooting like that. Reach for the moon. You're going to get the stars unless you get burnt, blow up, and fall back to earth in smoldering ash. And I'd rather hey, you didn't. Preservation is the name of the game in an endurance event. you just got to keep going. And this is how you do it. So this is still less, but as you're coming back from injury, I want you to think about this week, we're working our way slowly and cautiously, increasing over time back to this baseline week. Okay. And I would not even really think about putting actual intensity in, and this is another reason I kind of roll my eyes, you're like, I'm a speed work, I'm not going to get faster without speed work, and it's just so mean you want to be speed work. I'm like, man, you got to be able to handle... A week that looks like this, hey, look, I made 55 by doing this. Do you want to see? If you can't handle this without kind of wanting to choke, oh my gosh, it sounds so much running, and I would only get about four miles out of it because I'm so slow. Congratulations. If you aren't do if you aren't doing that yet, there is no way that you are at the point where you would benefit from anaerobic functioning. Anaerobic you've probably already got it, meaning you've overtrained at other times in the past, which is how people come to me in the first place. I'm very much a coach of last resort and I'm good with that. So, not saying if you're here, congratulations, you can do speed work. It means you need to at least be strong enough to be able to do this on a regular basis before we can even consider adding in speed work because there's so much else we can do that has less risk of injury before we get here. So, somewhere Julie's like, hold up, you had me doing really stupid shit, coach, before we got here. And that is true, but Julie, you are special. You are my unicorn. You were born with a weapon on your head. Not quite yet. So, again, this is not your baseline. This is higher than baseline. This is more work than we do, I think, in the third week of the monthlies. And, again, this is not desirable. But if you aren't here yet, don't talk to me about speed work. You're not there for speed work yet. And even but still, you could get hurt. So, the way we need to get faster is to kind of shore this up slowly and consistently over time. And before you know it, you're like, hey, I've been running five days a week for six weeks. And what does this look like? 45 and 45, Shane, you know what that is? 90, 90 and 30 is 120. 120 and 45 is 165. And 165 plus 95, you know what that is? you and be like that's just not a whole lot but in six weeks Look we went this. from two and a half hours of running a week you can't divide yet I wish you could we went we doubled the, your we 
doubled your weekly running volume by moving slowly and conscientiously. In six weeks, we went from doing a little over two and a half hours, really unsure of ourselves, to running almost four hours, a little over, sorry, a little over four hours a week, thirsty for more, and ready to put, leverage our way back into a training cycle. What is it, baby? What? What? You got another sunburn. How'd you get another sunburn? Miss Marcy gave you a sunburn. No, it was outside. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Do you need a kiss? No. That is going to dry your skin out, girl. No wonder your cheeks are pink. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's a Clorox wipe. That is, you can't wipe, you, can, you shouldn't wash your face with those, honey. That's, that's what's making your skin red. And that's why you feel sunburned. Um, oh, you know, I have, yeah, could you put that in trash, please? You just. Alex, I, I think we might need to move some of these Clorox wipes. Um, maybe I need to be a little more attentive as a parent, too. Oh, I know, but honey, that's why your cheek hurts. You can't put that on your cheek. Okay, come on, give me a kiss. We're going to go put lotion on, okay? We're going to fix it. Mm. Okay, and the final thing I'm going to talk about, and a lot of people coming out of 101. Here, let's turn on the face of the camera. So. What do you want, baby? The crayon. The crayon? What, this? Wait, let's sit back, smile, turn around, smile at the camera, and say, hi, Miss Susan. Hi, Miss Susan. Hi, Miss Susan. Okay, there's your shot to get all of this a screenshot, since I'm pretty sure it's about to get ruined. Yes, I can. Just a second. My hands are sweaty. Yes, because you've been playing with Clorox wipes, and we've probably washed off all your fingerprints. Like, a, you're going to do great. Interpol's going to love you. Here we go. So, Sure, just don't lick it, all right? It's probably not a good idea. Wow. All right, so that's all I have to say about that. That is how, uh, that is a very, very methodical, uh, conscientious step-by-step -step process of easing back in after you've been out with an injury for a while. Cheyenne, please, no, not right now, not right now. We'll, we'll draw it back, we'll draw it. All right, guys, all right, all right, all right. I mean it, I mean it, I mean it. Shiloh, give me that now. You two, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. But you are erasing my work thing. All right, all right, all right. No. All right. Okay. I'll holler at you guys in a little bit. No. Cheyenne. No. Cheyenne. No. She said stop. You should have stopped. Give me the lid. We're done. We're done with this tonight. We're done with this for tonight. Final thing I'm going to do this and then I'm ending the stream for the night. Um, sorry I didn't get a chance to see. Is uh, Daddy went back on the road and that is never easy. <laughs> sorry, Cheyenne had a word game she wanted to play with you guys and Shiloh just erased it. It is so hard having little sisters. It is so hard and it's not fair. Oh wait, can you go grab that? Hanky Hanky does not belong on the Pilates chair. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, helper. Oh my god. You're sweet. Come here. I know. It's not fair. 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 Okay. But we're going to play the game tomorrow night, okay? Or maybe even later. If my call's finished, oh, everybody's giving you hugs. See? That means, that means hugs from Susan. And that says hugs. Yay! Oh, thank you, Pat Brockman, for taking a screenshot of the stuffed animal. A screenshot of what stuffed animal? Um, I had the deer in my lap. I wish you could be our next door grandma too, Pat Brockman. See, she says she wishes she'd come over and play with you. And be, your, be a spare grandma. Wouldn't that be fun? A bonus grandma. Yay. One in between visits with your real grandma. You can come visit us anytime you want to, Pat Brockman. We would love it. Okay, well, oh, 
she did. All right, we're gonna put lotion on that and don't. Oh uh, no, it is so hard being a big sister. You do it so well there. You are so good. You're the best. I love you, and I'm so proud to be your mommy. Okay. I really am. Yay, Gretchen, no, you don't need to be doing 5K pace ever. I was half talking to you and wishing you were here, and I'm glad you are. We don't need to test your knees until we are quite sure that they would pass the test. The problem with testing and tune-ups and all this stuff and the things that people like to talk about is that we all get carried away in doing them because someone said that you could instead of waiting for the coach to suggest them because the coach thinks you're ready. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Number one, most people don't want to pay what it would cost to have someone that involved in your recovery or your progression. Um, and number two, I mean, it really just comes down to cost, right? Like, uh, it, it isn't... It's hard. I can't get people to pay for a second round of heart rate training because they're like, I've done it before, seen it, don't need you. Or the community, I can do this on my own. And I'm like, okay, that's fine, great. Um, but that also means that I can't help you make choices and you're kind of on your own. I feel like the time when you're most vulnerable and you're most likely to need, if nothing else, consider me a consultant. I'm someone here to second, I'm your personal advocate, your personal cheerleader that's here to second guess that, that decision that you're ready to make. Sometimes in a moment of like extreme emotion, either like I'm really eager and I'm really impatient, we need someone to be like, hey, I know you are, but this is not a good idea yet. And sometimes we listen and sometimes we don't, but just having that, the ability to have that conversation should be worth something, but we, I don't know, it's very much part of the American pathos, like, ah, I'm gonna be born in the log cabin I built with my own two hands. I don't need help, never did. That's whatever, it is what it is. So. All that just to say, that's why I say over and over and over, I'm here, I'm here for you, I'm not going anywhere. Even in January into the great beyond, I'm still going to be twitching. Um, so feel free to come here and ask me questions. I'm still going to be producing my silly little morning mantra podcast, five minutes every single morning, no matter what. And I'm also going to be making that Nuzzle newsletter because I'm never going back to filling up my Facebook feed with links of all the news articles that I liked a whole lot. Because now I found those, it's free and it's fun. And of course I'm going to keep doing that. Until I know what the next steps are, those are three things I can promise you I'll continue to do. So if you have a question, run it by me. Um, but yeah, no, 5K pace, 5K pace is hard. And it's not about like how fit, we, we tend to look at fit versus fat on a binary spectrum with nothing in the middle. And we'd like to say stupid things because I think this is stupid. Strong is the new skinny. Problem is, we don't know what strong looks like. You wouldn't know strong if it walked out of the alley and punched you in the face because all we see, it's easier to identify skinny on site or fat on site versus strong on site because strong can look like a whole bunch of things. It ends up being a more esoteric question. The person that finishes when they shouldn't, I would argue that's a weakness over a strength. The person that drops out, you might think that that, the, or DNFs, you might see that as a total pussy weak move, I'm like, that can be the hardest decision to make and therefore the strongest one. So strong looks like a lot of things and it's not easily recognizable on site. And sometimes the hardest thing to do, the one that requires the most strength, is doing that thing you don't want to do or try not to cry when your little sister comes by and erases your hard work. And it's okay to feel this way. It's so okay. What she did was not cool and it was mean and I'm sorry. And she did erase my picture I put under. And this is how my runners feel when they get hurt. It's not fair. It's not fair. And it's not okay. Someone took my, all my hard work and wiped it away. And then we're in such a hurry to get it back. So the wisdom of Cheyenne. Let's live and think through this experience, right? Faster paces is something to be earned. And you earn it by running consistently and building enough strength to be able to withstand those really hard paces by saying over and over and over again, what's the work? What can I do? I'm continuously identifying your weak spots. That's why I go to PT every single week. Granted, I've got great insurance, but I'm at the PT even when there's nothing wrong because I'm continually looking for the flaw in the system that could keep me from finishing my training cycle or not running again. So there's that. It's worth thinking about it. You, it when we say it never hurts to ask, 
That's really what we mean. Hey, is there is there something wrong? Hey, is there something wrong? Hey, could I be stronger? Hey, do I need more glute work? Hey, 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 am I ready yet? Am I ready yet? Am I ready yet? Keep asking and keep doing the work and someday you will be, but trying to get there sooner, you might end up with a replaced knee. And I'd really rather you didn't because after spending a year in bed, I can tell you, that's no fun, is it, Cheyenne? No, it's fun after, it's fun for like a day and then it feels like prison. And prison's no good. So, um, I love that your grandma's name is Patty. That's the best thing in the whole wide world. So yeah, I love you, Gretchen. And I know you have more going on than most people do, but that's why I get offended almost on your behalf when people come to me with totally avoidable injuries because I think about you and think about like what a disadvantage you came in with when you started running with no, with, with, not the guidance that I think you deserved before I came along and I and I think of the people that just didn't that had the guidance and didn't take it and got hurt thinking like there's just something wrong with me or that's just how I was built and I think about how unnecessary it is and I think about you and I just think how like for every every like every time every time like a runner has a surgery that could have been avoidable like Gretchen gets punched in the face <laughs> Because it's so stupid, or Gretchen would want to punch him in the face. Um, co coaching was more important than when I was returning to running after significant injury and recovery. Yeah, and look at you now. Hate to keep pointing this out, Kate, except I kind of love pointing it out. Like, when was the surgery? You can go ahead and put it in the room. When was the surgery? When did we start running again? And since then, you ran a 10 mile race, a half marathon, YOLO to marathon, and now we're training for a 50 miler. I think you might have done a Ragnar too. Just saying, it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> kind of a big deal. And every day that you're a little slow, you're still faster than when you were healing. And I'm real proud of you, Kate. I really am. I'm proud of you too, Gretchen. I'm proud of you, Pat. And Kate is a total badass. Pat asks, are you still going to do private clients? Um, I'm, I'm not taking on new private clients at the moment um, because I've got to get, I'm not canceling the ones that I've got because once I've been working with people for July a while, 9th. it's easy to keep going. July 9th. July 19th, yes. Yeah, so Kate's surgery was on July 19th of 2017. So it's been about in 18 months we had a surgery, a recovery. She only started running in 2018 and very gingerly at that. And look how far you've come in less than, in, I mean, in less than 18 months, realistically. Yay. Look, there's a smiley face. Brown. And it says, Cass. Kate, Kate. Kate the Great. Kate the Great. Yes. So, Pat, back to your question about private clients. I'm not canceling my current commitments because once I've been working with people for a while, it's easy to keep going. But um, what's hard is, to, let me finish this thought please for the third time. What's hard is to develop a new relationship in the midst of all the uncertainty that we have going on during IEP season. So um, I will, once my, once, um, once RJ's path forward is cleared, um, there's no telling what I'll be doing, but private clients, I will absolutely be on that list. And I promise I will reach out and let you know as soon as I do. Um, no, you're not slow. You're building the endurance base. If you think of it like we're trying to build um, this is, this is uh, Jay Rowe's um, analogy. We're trying to build the biggest orange possible and then squeeze all the juice out of it on race day. And we just build in a bigger orange for you. It's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. Yay! So, so, so that's it. I will, I'm not retiring. I'm not dead. I've just got to figure my family out before I can make commitments to people. But um, I know how important this relationship is, and I take it and you seriously. And I would rather underpromise and overdeliver in the form of things that are fun and free than take your money and not quite give you what you thought you were getting. You know, so I don't like disappointing people. I'd rather be like, hey, this podcast is really awesome. Hey, she's here on Twitch again, and yay! Here, her nuzzle newsletter is here. She's still there, and every week that I'm creating it, there's still the possibility that I'll come back and coach. It's uh, it's as much for me. Uh, thinking about the future and planning the, uh, as it is for you guys. So um, let's stay on this crazy ride together. You are coached. You are loved. I really need to eat some dinner. And then I got a call coming in at 7 o'clock. Yay. Feel better. And tomorrow night we're going to start the stream a little bit early so Cheyenne can do a work game with you guys. Won't that be nice? Okay. And I'm going to make sure Shiloh doesn't erase it next time, okay? Okay. 
your coach, you are loved. Happy Hanukkah. Let's go win at, is it Tuesday night? I think so. Tuesday. Want to hit the end button right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm.